which might cause you know pressure on the health system so as we have reached a high percentage of vaccines and a high percentage of booster dose and the health situation is comforting so maybe the focus now is on those who are not vaccinated or who lack immunity in order to protect their health and souls. Thank you. Al Watan newspaper Mohammed Rashad to Dr. Manab. With the increased number of the active cases who are coming to Bahrain from outside, from abroad, shouldn't there be a need to have? institutional quarantine and is there any advice for citizens or residents not to travel only if necessary well part of the question i answered the strict procedures like the institutional quarantine when we established that at the beginning Perhaps at the beginning, we were dealing with a virus which was totally different than now. So we cannot implement or repeat the same procedures now. But the most important thing that the virus is not coming from outside Bahrain or from abroad. Whether I close the borders, the virus there are many ways for the virus and we shall not forget that there are some humanitarian or social needs for people to travel. So let's say if we have a pandemic, if the travel is not necessary, it is better to postpone it until the situation will go back normal because we are part of a globe and so unfortunately some countries are still having an increase in the active cases and hospitalized cases so if the trouble is not necessary it should be avoided and if they had to then they had to implement all the precautionary measures even if the country of destination does not require it they should do it and implement it. And the same thing when they come back from those countries. It is obvious that you should not contact those with weak immunity people or those who have chronic diseases. And if you experience any flu symptoms, you should take the test and you shouldn't just say, well, it doesn't matter and I don't need to know. And you should take the test and isolate yourself. So if you have this self-awareness, I think the even the strict procedures will be not necessary. So it is like a humanitarian social initiative that should come from ourselves to implement the procedures and therefore we wouldn't need strict procedures. Pradeep from Delhi Tribune to Dr. Walid al -Mana. Are there any threatens from the new variants take into consideration the increase in the number of the active cases? Thank you Pradeep for the question. First, uh, I was attracted by the word threatens Hopefully, there will not be any threatens in Bahrain. Maybe now, preparation, this could be the word. Well, thank God we have the preparations in Bahrain. If God forbids we needed it, we have the preparation for the ICUs, for the beds, for the critical cases, and also for the tests and the for the vaccines. So, thank God in Bahrain, we have a great plan to be prepared and among the important points in, Bahrain, in, in this press conference is that we have the readiness so yes but there are chances for improvement as for the new variant thank god we have not seen any threatens or challenges because thank god 
the active cases are less who need to be hospitalized. Maybe the active cases, all of them are precautionary. For those in charge of treatment, they care about the patient and not to go into critical level. So even those hospitalized, it could be just precautionary. And for the new variant, so yes, we don't have challenges. And for any variant, for any updates, we're going to cope with them with our readiness. We are really taking all these risks into consideration and we're assessing them on a daily basis and also on an hourly basis and hopefully we're going to get rid of this virus and as before we have taken precautionary measures and we're going to go into the same line also to dr walid from russia ibrahim Bana, does this stage require us to have online learning? Thank you. If we're talking today about the precautionary procedures, we've seen that we have decreased them. So yes, the measures are there, but people might expect like strict, like distant learning, but their awareness is important. As for distant learning, we have set in this yellow level, this is optional to attend schools. The advice from the medical task force after the holiday that at least like 10 days to be online and especially for those coming from trouble who are coming from Bahrain and as for the daily life or for the schools I think for the level we have not given any advice or like to be recommended to be it will be assessed later but now it is optional for students to attend schools and hopefully there won't be any problems. Well, now we conclude the question and answer section. Thank you very much to the speakers for your briefs. Also, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and also for the journalists and reporters. And before concluding, kindly be reminded to follow all the precautionary measures and guidelines to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Thank you very much.
Guards. Today, the King hails the outstanding role of the National Guard alongside the BDF and public security units in defending the nation and protecting its gains. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlights the importance of strengthening cooperation and coordination with the U.S., especially in the military and defense fields. The National Guard Commander deputizes the National Guard Staff Director to attend a military recruit's graduation, which coincides with the National Guard's celebration of its 25th anniversary. And the Minister of Interior affirms the importance of securing regional waters and addressing the challenges related to this matter. Welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable congratulations from the National Guard Commander, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, on the 25th anniversary of the National Guard. His Highness the General affirmed that the National Guard has become the basis for security and defense system in the kingdom thanks to the unlimited support of His Majesty the King. He praised the visions of His Majesty the King that contributed to the achievements of the National Guard in performing their national duties and protecting the kingdom's security and achievements. He affirmed allegiance to continue the efforts, wishing His Majesty the King lasting good health and happiness. In return, His Majesty the King sent a reply cable to the National Guard president where he praised the role of the National Guard in protecting the gains of the kingdom alongside the BDF and public security units working together in maintaining the security and stability of the country. His Majesty hailed the achievement of the National Guard since its establishment and wished them success in making further accomplishments and supporting the kingdom's march. His Majesty congratulated the commander and all affiliates on the occasion and wished them further success. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable congratulations from the National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, on the 25th anniversary of the National Guard. His Highness extended deepest congratulations to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the national occasion. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa affirmed that His Royal Highness's constant support to the National Guard has played a major role in enhancing its preparedness and undertaking its national duties, including safeguarding the security of Bahrain as well as the safety of its citizens under the leadership of the Supreme Commander His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness sent a cable of thanks to the National Guard Commander in reply to His Highness a congratulatory cable. His Royal Highness expressed sincere congratulations to the National Guard President and affiliates, including commanders, officers, and personal personnel on the occasion, commending their dedicated efforts that have contributed to enhancing the preparedness and competence of the National Guard to answer the call of duty, protect national accomplishments, and defend the nation's capabilities in accordance with the directives of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, Commander of the United States Fifth Fleet and Commander of Combined Maritime Forces, Vice Admiral Charles Cooper II at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness noted the strength of the long-standing strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S., which is based on mutual interest. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of strengthening cooperation and coordination, especially regarding military and defense matters, which will benefit both countries and their peoples. His Royal Highness also praised the active role of the U.S. in promoting security and stability in the region and striving for world peace. During the meeting, several issues of common interest and the latest regional and international developments were reviewed. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the newly appointed Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ali bin Abdurrahman bin Ali Al Khalifa at Rafah Palace to mark issuance of the Royal Decree appointing him head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness affirmed the strong and historical ties between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, noting that the nations will reach further levels and in integration in a number of fields with the support and commitment of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian 
of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness congratulated Sheikh Ali bin Abdul Rahman on his appointment, wishing him success in performing his duties, and to convey His Royal Highness's greetings to the Saudi monarch and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. For his part, Sheikh Ali bin Abdul Rahman expressed pride in his new appointment, as well as gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to support the diplomatic workforce at all levels. The Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, also attended the meeting. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, deputized the National Guard Staff Director, Major General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa, to attend a military recruits graduation, which coincides with the National Guard's celebration of its 25th anniversary. In his speech, Sheikh Abdul Aziz affirmed the interest and full support of the National Guard Commander to develop the training system through educa educating its affiliates with the latest military sciences. The graduates performed practical parades, including military marches, and took the oath of the National Guard. The Major General headed, handed awards and certificates to graduates congratulating and encouraging them to embark their best efforts to serve their country under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Following the directors of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Endurance Championship kicked off. His Highness Sheikh Nasser witnessed the race and his directors motivated the riders throughout the race. His Highness expressed appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his support to equestrian and endurance sports and added that this sport support affirms His Highness's keenness to elevate endurance sport in Bahrain and contribute to its achievements. He affirmed the high capabilities of the participants and affirmed that this sport will continue developing on an international level. His Highness praised the keenness of brief led by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in encouraging the youth and new generations to take part in this sport. The competition witnessed wide participation from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Morocco.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahraini equestrian achievements and international events embody the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He expressed pleasure with the victory of the Horse of Bahrain Victorious team, which won first place in the British winter season at Kempton Racecourse, stressing that the strong return of the team in foreign participations is an opportunity to make further achievements. During the upcoming participations, His Highness noted that the team is proceeding according to a set plan which aims to participate in all forums and affirm Bahrain's equestrian status. He also praised the dedication of jockey Jeffrey Smith and trainer Roger Werner. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al Naimi. His Highness welcomed the minister and conveyed to him the greetings of His Majesty the King and his wishes of success to all the ministry's affiliates according to the government's vision led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to achieve Bahrain Vision 2030. His Highness discussed with the minister the means of developing student activities through various programs that aim to encourage school students to participate in these activities, including sports. He instructed the minister to study the suggestion to include sign language as a student activity. He hailed the ministry's efforts to rehabilitate students in a youth educational environment that enhances the students' participation and interaction. For his part, the Minister of Education expressed appreciation for the efforts and support of His Highness Sheikh Khalid for the sports movement, affirming that the ministry will dedicate all its potentials to support His Highness's efforts to implement plans and programs that contribute to developing various students' activities. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, paid a visit to Spartan Club, a club that introduced many champions and made numerous accomplishments in many events. GSA CEO Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar and His Highness's advisor Mohammed Shahid were also present. His Highness met with the President of the club Farat Al Kohiji and a number of members where he praised the efforts of the club in supporting Bahraini sports through a number of programs that support the national goals and hone the, hone the skills of the youth. His Highness was briefed on the plans and strategies of the club that will contribute in enhancing the sports sector and highlighted the role played by the clubs in this regard. He affirmed the importance of the role of clubs in partnering with various sporting institutions and developing the sports system in the kingdom and making further accomplishments. His Highness wished the Spartan club further success. The club's president expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his keenness in enhancing the sports march of the kingdom. He affirmed keenness to continue the efforts to achieve further prosperity. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, witnessed the conclusion of the joint maritime exercise of the Coast Guard Vigilant Guard 10 in the presence of the Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan, and the Assistant Public Security Chief for Operations and Training in charge of Coast Guard Command Affairs, Brigadier General Dr. Sheikh Hamad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The exercise, which was conducted by the Coast Guard Command with the participation of a number of the Ministry of Interior's directorates, aims to determine the level of readiness regarding the necessary 
precautionary measures to achieve civil protection and enhance the security of vital waterfront facilities within the framework of securing navigation and maintaining maritime security and safety. The minister was briefed on the preparation and control committee's summary and the implementation process. He stressed the importance of securing regional waters and addressing the challenges related to this matter, which requires raising the levels of readiness and con continuing cooperation, coordination and the exchange of experiences to enhance maritime security and safety. General Sheikh Rashid praised the efficiency and capabilities of the Coast Guard and the participating directorates and the ro their role in planning and implementing within the framework of commitment to duty and dedication in carrying out security tasks and maintaining maritime security and safety. He stressed the importance of continuing training and reviewing procedures and implementing these types of exercises to strengthen cooperation and coordination between directorates and security agencies and develop joint field work. General Sheikh Rashid then inspected a number of new boats equipped with the latest marine navigation systems, which were recently introduced into service in the presence of the Deputy Head of Mission, Minister Plenipotentiary, and the UAE Embassy and Commander of U.S. Coast Guard Patrol Force Southwest Asia, the minister was briefed on the advanced security capabilities of these boats. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the UAE and the U.S. for their cooperation and technical support. The Secretary General of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, met with the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman, David McAllister. She praised the cooperation between Bahrain and the EU and affirmed the importance of such visits and the Kingdom's keenness to enhance cooperation and exchange expertise. The meeting also included discussions of ways to further bolster cooperation and coordination between the two sides in the higher education and research fields. McAllister expressed pleasure in visiting the Kingdom and meeting with officials and affirmed the EU's keenness to continue the cooperation in all fields. And before we end the news, here's a reminder of the top stories. His Majesty the King hails the outstanding role of the National Guard alongside the BDF and public security units in defending the nation and protecting its gains. His Royal Highness the Prime Prince and Prime Minister highlights the importance of strengthening cooperation and coordination with the U.S., especially in the military and defense fields. The National Guard commander deputizes the National Guard staff director to attend a military recruit's graduation, which coincides with the National Guard celebration of its 25th anniversary. And the Minister of Interior affirms the importance of securing regional waters and addressing the challenges related to this matter. And that's all from Bahrain International's News Center. From all the news team and me, Mohammed Youssef, goodbye.